What's up? Um, this is Yuda for BitLab Academy, and today we're going to talk about the file folder tab under the preferences. So let's get into that. Um, first of all, you have save current set as default. So what you can do is you can start setting up how many tracks you want, all the routings that you want for your tracks, uh, return tracks, any effects that you want on any track, any uh, instruments, whatever you want, and even keyboard mappings and uh, MIDI mappings as well, if you need any MIDI mappings. Then you can go back to your preferences, file folder tab, save current set as default, save, and the next time I'm going to open up Ableton Live, it's going to open up with these settings. Nice. Let's go back, command comma or control comma on a PC. Excellent. I'm going to clear it so it's going to go back to my default live set. Excellent. Create analysis files. So every time you bring in an audio file into Ableton Live, it's going to create an analysis file and you're going to see it as go to my maybe my samples folder uh, so underneath uh, each audio file you're gonna see the same name dot ASD that's the analysis file for Ableton Live it's gonna create that automatically so it won't have to analyze uh, each file that you bring into Ableton Live every time you bring it so that's uh, on by default you should keep it on just be aware that it does create those files they're very small and should it uh, interfere sample editor uh, you can set up a default sample editor like WaveLab, Audacity, SoundForge, all those dedicated softwares for sample editing. And when you load a sample, if you click right here, you click edit, it's going to take you to your sample editor. I don't have anyone set up because I'm editing my files in Ableton. Next is a temporary folder. Uh, before you save your projects, if you do any recordings, Ableton is going to save those audio files into this folder. You can change where it is. Once you save the project, it's going to move all the recordings to your projects folder. Max, if you have Ableton Live Suite, you also have Max for Live, and this is where uh, the Max application is. If Ableton don't see it, you can show it where it is. Or if you update it, for example, from Max 6 to Max 7, you can also tell it, okay, let's use the new one. Next is the decoding catch. Um, so this is the minimum amount of free space uh, Ableton needs in the decoding. Um, and what it does is every time you bring a WAV file, oh, I'm sorry, every time you bring an MP3 file, um, it's actually going to decode it into um, WAV or AIFF, depends on what you have by default. Here is the catch folder. If I open it up, we can see all my uh, audio files that I brought in that Ableton decoded. And here you can also set the maximum amount of catch if it's grabbing up too much space on a computer and you need the extra hard drive space. Next is the plugin sources. Here you can rescan plugins. Very useful if you install a new plugin while Ableton is running and you don't want to close and open up the software again. And if you option click rescan, it's going to rescan again all your plugins. Uh, you can use uh, your def uh, audio units or your VST. These are default location on your computer. You can reach out to them by going to your finder, go, computer, your hard drive, library, audio, and plugins. Under components, you will see your audio units. And under VST, not VST3, VST, you will see your uh, VST plugins. Uh, here in the VST, you can actually create your own folders like I did here. And you can uh, manually move your plugins to organize them. I have a large amount of plugins and it's very useful when they're organized like this. So I can uh, better uh, find them a lot easier. Some plugins... Uh, have um, custom locations in your computer, like the Waves package. Uh, so you can tell it, hey, this is, uh, I have a custom folder of plugins. You can turn it on and then tell it where it is on your computer. Nice. So that's the file folder tab. Next time, uh, we're going to cover the library tab. Catch you next time.